we are going to be creating some abstract art using words or letters. <clears throat> we're going to be actually looking at some of these papers. These are some positive adjectives that describe ourselves. So happy, hardworking, honest, energetic, um, gentle, fun, funny, flexible, loving. But you guys will look over these and you'll pick a couple that you want to use for this particular um, word art. But let me talk about how we're going to do this. And I believe we're going to be practicing on these dry erase boards. The first thing you guys are going to do, you are going to draw two. Well, first of all, you want your paper to be up and down vertically. Then what you guys are going to do, you guys are going to draw two horizontal lines that are slightly wavy, just two. And when you create these lines, these two lines that are sort of wavy, you want three sections that are pretty equal. Okay, so you wouldn't want to, <coughs> you wouldn't want to draw a wavy line here and a wavy line here. Okay, because these sections aren't equal. So just make, the th make sure they're pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. <coughs> So maybe you want to do slight wave here and then another slight wave. Be careful about making a really curvy line. Okay, you really want it more of a kind of a slight curve and it's going to look like your letters are kind of slowly gliding on these waves. If you have it like this, it's going to be real tricky. So two slightly wavy lines. And then you're going to pick your words that you want, whatever you want. Now to practice on this dry erase board, you could just write your name, you could write the ABCs, it doesn't really matter. I just want you guys to understand how to write the letters. The letters for one are going to be all capital. Okay, so I'm just going to do the ABCs so you can kind of see. So the bottom, we're going to start at the top line, then we'll fill this line and then this line. They're all capital letters, so I'm going to start with A. You're going to start on this bottom line, and you want to take that A, and you want to go all the way to the top edge of the paper or the board. <clears throat> and you're going to bring this down all the way to that bottom line. So that line is kind of moving, so it's going to be in different places. So you're just going to put your A. And again, right now in this practice, it doesn't matter what letters or words you use. So B, all the way down, all the way down, C, D. So you can kind of tell that these capital letters almost look like they're riding this wave. Um, I could probably fit an E here but I want to show you something. Do you see how the bottom of my E follows this wave? So it's here, not here. And then here's my middle one, and then my top one will follow this line. I'll show you the same thing with an F. <clears throat> so I'm going to go here, do my line for my F. The top of my F is going to follow that line. It's going to be like right here which is a little tricky. Some people get messed up by that. And then here's the middle part. And you could have it curved too if you want. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way down. H. And the next letter I, again, that top part of the I is gonna follow this line all the way down and the bottom line is going to follow this. So the bottom of the eye is kind of curved. Sometimes this gets tricky. You're so used to writing a, a letter, for example, an L, like this, and then when I ask you to stretch it and make the, it different, it gets, it tricks people's brains a little. So you're just going to go all the way down here. I know that's not the correct letter that's next. I'm just putting letters now. Um, this is R. 
T, notice the T, I'm just going to do a T, the T comes, the top of the T is following that line right here. Okay, and just practice on this dry erase board. <clears throat> Once you know how to do it, and I've seen it, then you guys can go on to your white paper. I will tell you, I have seen some kids get a little confused. They'll do their slightly waved lines, and then they might do this. Okay, which is incorrect. You want capital letters and you want them stretched following that line. So once you get that, and I've looked at it and you're pretty comfortable with it, you're gonna get your white sheet of paper. And you, again, you want it long ways. You can go ahead and put your name on the back in class code. Make sure you've picked out your words. Mm, and, and you might, on your paper, your paper is definitely bigger than your dry erase board, so you're gonna be able to fit more words than you had on your dry erase board. So I'm going to start off with my two lines and a pencil and I'm going to go ahead and start writing some of my words. So I'm going to put Z, now the bottom of my Z needs to follow this, A, and remember this is your artwork. So the words should be words that you choose, not words that your friends necessarily think you should choose. They should be words chosen by you. Okay, I just put zany. Um, the next one, I'm gonna put hopeful. Now your word may not fit all the way across. This word hopeful, I don't know if it's gonna fit all on this line. Is that okay? Yep, you just go down to the next line. H E P E F capital F Bartos F and then U L. Now I've got a little room left down here. Not a big word. Hmm. And put bold. B O L D. That'll be good. What does it mean? I don't really know. O, L, and D. So I really filled up my space with those three words. If you can only fit um, two words, then you can only fit two. If you can do four, that's fine. Just make sure you filled in this space. The last thing that you guys are going to do today, you are going to use this bingo dauber you're each going to have a little paper towel next to you. I'm just going to use this paper. <clears throat> when you open this, it's really important that you don't squeeze it. If you squeeze it, you're going to get liquid everywhere. Um, I have had the second graders use these and the third graders and the fourth graders and everybody did pretty well. So um, open it up. There's a little sponge. Set your lid to the side. Make sure you know where that is. Before you begin, you just want to press this sponge onto your paper towel to make sure you can get, there we go. So I have that black dot. You may want to fold your, your paper towel in half a couple times so it doesn't go through. My paper's pretty thick. Then you're just going to take your bingo dauber and you are just going to outline your letters. Now in addition to the letters, you are going to outline your lines. If while you're outlining your lines, your bingo dauber starts to get real scratchy, like it's running out of ink, you don't shake it, you just bring it back to your paper towel and kind of dab it. There you go, and put it in the drying rack. So the next thing you guys are going to do, you've created this really cool word art and you probably noticed it's a little hard to see your words and that's okay. The main purpose of this isn't to see those words, it's to see a really cool piece of artwork and you, when you look at it a certain way then you can kind of find the words, which is fun. So you've got these different spaces that you've made now from your lines and what you guys are going to do, you are going to fill these different spaces in 
with different patterns and designs. I've got this paper that I can hand out to you guys and it's got a lot of very simple <clears throat> patterns and designs. Do you have to use these? No. Can you use these? Yes. You can make your own up. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to find an empty space. Okay, and I can see that this is an empty space right here. Um, maybe I just want to do a simple striped pattern in this section. Okay, now I'm done with this section already. And then I have this next section. I might even turn it upside down and work on it to make it easier. I'm going to pick a different color. Pick this blue. And I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one, which is just kind of big, thick circles. Now I can even have some of these circles going off the edge of this shape. Excuse me. To make the shape appear even bigger than it is like it's really big. Another one coming off. Notice I'm taking my time. I'm not going fast and just scribbling something on quickly. Okay, that's pretty nice. I like that actually. Um, and then I have this space here. I have this space. I have this space. And you can see all these shapes that we've made from these lines. So go ahead and just take your oil pastels and add some different things. And you're just gonna keep going until you're finished. And you're just gonna pick a different, you could use the same color, you could even use the same, um, I could use these blue thick circles somewhere else if I wanted to. You don't have to just that be the only place you use it. I can make these thick circles with this color, or I could make this pattern with a different color. So it's completely up to you how you want to do this. ones. Um, this is going to take a little bit of time. This does not have to be done right away. Um, if you're done in two or three minutes, then you've gone way too fast. I really want you to think about variety. That means different kinds of things. So I want to see a variety of different lines, a variety of shapes, and a variety of patterns. I don't want to see the same pattern over and over again. You can definitely repeat a pattern, but you don't want the same thing throughout. You want a variety, and you also want a variety of colors, okay? You don't want to use the same magenta for the whole thing. You want to really use a variety and spread those colors around. Part of our project is filling, uh, painting these sections just right over top of the color. What's really cool, we've got some liquid watercolor here. Usually liquid watercolor comes in a bottle and you just pour it in. However, at home I don't have that, so I've just taken these little watercolor things that come in a watercolor container and just dipped them with some water. And we, they both work the same. Since the paint is already liquid, you do not need to have your brush wet before you start. It's probably a better idea to have your brush dry. So I'm gonna rinse this off to make sure it's clean. I'm gonna wipe it <clears throat> once on my sponge to make sure it's dry, and then I'm just gonna start my color. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of blue. You don't need a lot, and I'm gonna start right over top. Excuse me. And you're just gonna take that blue and you're just going to put it right over top of those oil pastels. And what's really neat, maybe I want some blue here, is, get some of that. What happens is oil and water don't mix, so 
when you put this watercolor over top of the oil pastel, it resists it and it kind of comes off of it. You can see how it's kind of coming off of it. So I'm gonna try to do everything that I want blue first. I want you to think for a second why I would not put blue on top of blue oil pastel. If it's because you think there wouldn't be much contrast, you would be right. You might not be able to see anything. Um, I'm just gonna keep going with blue a little bit more, maybe in here, oh, that's cool. And when you're ready for the next color, you take your brush, dip it in the water, wipe it on the sponge, make sure that it is clean, and then you can go to your next color. And you're gonna keep going until the entire thing is finished. 